Blog Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Quality of Life Radio, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. That gong has spoken, everybody. Welcome to the show. It is June 15th, 2020. You're listening to Big Blend Radio's Quality of Life show. We are your hosts, Nancy Reed and Lisa Smith, the mother-daughter travel team on the Love Your Parks tour, where we travel across the country documenting parks, all parks, from national parks to community parks, and also sharing the stories of the different communities we visit. We also publish two digital interactive magazines, digital interactive magazines. We have Big Blend Radio and TV magazine that covers everything from art and music to food and wine to travel to education, which is what we're talking about today, and business, career, all that good stuff. So uh, a little bit of everything. And we also publish Parks and Travel magazine. You can see it all at BigBlendMagazines.com. Uh, today, we're very excited to welcome back one of our favorite guests who's been on our show since we started. Uh, that is Bobby DePorter. She is the co-founder of SuperCamp, the world leader in summer academic achievement programs. It's, a, it's an awesome program where, on unusual times, students go mm-hmm. and stay for 7 to 10 days on a campus and learn these life skills. They learn uh, study habits, how to really... Uh, you know, make decisions in life, make decisions in, in their studies, and also learn how to learn. It's really cool. Obviously, we're in a different time. And um, mm-hmm. you know what? Super Camp the has been going, fit. what, almost 40 years. Bobby uh, is the co-founder of that, also Quantum Learning Network. She's the president of that. And that really is about getting uh, the educators together and the schools together and teaching the teachers. And so this is this huge, when it comes to education, just go to QLN.com or supercamp.com. But we are in different times. And so what they've done this year is said, hey, we're going to go virtual with what we do because what they've been doing for almost 30, well, 39, almost 40 years, I should say, they are global and they have affected uh, millions of lives of students, uh, hundreds, thousands of uh, student success stories. And um, so they've gone completely virtual with this this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is awesome because it's going to be more accessible in a lot of ways. So she's joining us today to talk about that. And also she has Claude Mitchell joining us. He is a lead facilitator for SuperCamp. Uh, he is also a curriculum developer and trainer. So let's start with Bobby. Welcome back. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to be with you. I know this is different times, huh? You know, and it's it's like it's different. But it's I have to say, first thing is, you know, we call you the queen of excellence because not only mm-hmm. do you have Quantum Learning Network and Super camp, but it, the foundation is the eight keys of excellence is something that you've developed character education program. Uh, everyone, you can go to eight keys.org, the number eight, it's a free program for families. Also a great program for, uh, you know, schools and teachers to use. And I would say this would be a good time also for homeschoolers uh, to get involved with this. Um, but everything's part of that. And I would say that all eight keys are in full, they're in full they're, position they're in action working. mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're they absolutely are. Every time we have these conversations, it's always, oh, one key comes in, mm-hmm. and oh, that leads to one other and another, and it's like, mm-hmm. okay. But yeah, mm-hmm. you said it. It's like all eight keys are in action, and just in really powerful ways, and thoughtfulness, and reflection, and really getting down mm-hmm. to who I am in this time, because you know, there's just a, so much challenge and change in the world. There is, and I think there's a lot of pain. Go ahead, Nancy. I can. Oh, I was just going to say flexibility just keeps hitting me right in the forehead. Flexibility. You're so many it. stories about flexibility over the last yeah. couple of years in our conversation. I know. And so it's like, oh, it's it's got to be, you know, right now, flexibility so that you can carry on. Yeah. yeah. Be well, it was quite a pivot for us, you know, in yeah. a very short period of time. Because mm-hmm. all of our programs all over the world were physical programs, and all of our country partners are in the same situation we are with uh, 
programs mm-hmm. closed down that you can't meet. So having a virtual pivot was um, mm-hmm. all hands on deck here, all of yeah. everybody working on making that change, and we've had some uh, really good experiences so far. Well, I know that. I know. I remember just you know a few years back when you put Nancy and I into the Quantum Learning Network <laughs> program with teachers and thought, yeah, let's let's put them in there, let them learn, and we learned so much that day. It was so cool. I love the mind maps. I actually go back to that now, uh, especially as we're re- we're all reformatting. With we're reformatting, I think everybody has to, and it's kind of a it it's stressful. It's um, and economically scary for everybody. I'm going to say that. I don't, you know, whether you're a parent or um, you're a business owner, this, this is a stressful time. But when you start to mind map or use the eight keys of excellence to kind of really get to the core of things and get to the root of things to move forward and keep commitment, that's the key to me, is the commitment. And to do it with excellence and integrity, I think this is actually in a lot of ways, a positive time. And I know we're also dealing with a lot of issues in regards to what what the country has done, and we're dealing with racism, we're dealing with a lot of different issues. So we're really at a point of what can we do to uni- unify? And I think what you're doing with this virtually is going to unify people even more. And I think it's very important that youth are unified. And through youth, I think parents will be more unified. So I see this as being probably one of the coolest things you guys have done. <laughs> so I know, I know you've talked about doing this for years. So I just, I just want to say, I think this is, um, I think it's going to be cool. exceptional. I think it's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger than ever. Just saying. And you know, with the virtual part of it too, is that getting that engagement and interaction going because mm-hmm. um, most kids are home and doing schoolwork vir- virtually but they have a lot of reaction to it because for many of them, they're given assignments and they have to do the work and, you know, online by themselves with um, just a different world. But, you know, what we're doing is engagement, interesting interactions. And Claude can really tell you about it because he's the one that's been leading them for the last, um, gosh, two months now, I think. But one of um, my favorite quotes from one of the students that were on our, our virtual programs felt that he felt accepted in a group. Mm -hmm. There has to be a lot of interaction to feel like, wow, people are listening to me. You know, people respect me. People are not putting me down, and I'm, you know, making friends and interacting with people. So doing that virtually and having kids want to come, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to miss a session, you know, getting upset Mm -hmm. if you have to miss one. So something they look forward to. I love this. I want to bring Claude on. Claude, Welcome to the show. It's your first time, and I know we'll be chatting with you in the future. Uh, again, Claude is a lead facilitator for SuperCamp and uh, develops the curriculum. So he's uh, you're busy rewriting everything for the Internet right now, aren't you? <laughs> so welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Thanks, yeah. For, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad to be here. So how is this going from in-person to virtual? I know it's never going to be quite the same, but... Are you able to have that connectivity that Bobby's talking about as a trainer and a facilitator? Um, yes. That, I think that was one of the biggest, I guess, uh, concerns that I had going into it. Um, but uh, like we always say at camp, uh, camp works, and it doesn't matter if it's virtual or if it's in person. Um, and the thing that really shocked me was the fact that kids really wanted that connection and that they were mm-hmm. able to get this connection um, even though they had probably been doing virtual through school and but we learned that they were probably just meeting with their teachers for 30 minutes and um, not really getting uh, to know each other or doing anything that was interactive it was more of just instruction and then going to send them off to do uh, kind of busy work so with uh, quantum learning mentors we were able to get people together get students together and we have fun. It's relaxed. It's not. It's not like school. There's no pressure. There's no homework. Everything is a challenge to push you to be better mm-hmm. and for growth. Is there a breathing space for the students? Because I also I know Bobby. We've talked about this over the years, about the stress that students are on. There's so many extracurricular activities. There's the stress of college, or maybe not college. Maybe they want to go on the entrepreneurial vein, which I know that this program incorporates too. 
Uh, but Claude, are you feeling that with the students being at home that they're able to kind of maybe breathe a little bit and not have the amount of stress? I think um, from from what I've experienced over these past two months, um, what what really helped us, um, what benefited us with this QL Mentors program was we were able to introduce something that could allow them to um, implement breaks for themselves, find uh, mm-hmm. ways to kind of relax from the busy work that they got from school. So they were able to implement a lot of our strategies that could help them not get frustrated, not feel exhausted, um, and not feel kind of like burnt out from all the things that they were getting. And so they found found ways to set up their optimal environment, found ways to relax and decompress and de-stress and create oh, and those then, uh, shifts. And then at that time they're now learning scheduling and, and decision-making, right, with that kind of thing too. It's like mm-hmm. I'm kind of like now I'm having to dictate my own schedule a little bit more, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. in, a, in a different way. Right. It was, and cool. our our main thing was to was to help them take control over their learning because a lot of them felt like they didn't have any control. Wow! So this opens hmm. new doors. I mean, Nancy, when you think about when you were in school, I think about when I was in school. You know, I always said like if I had super camp, I I would I want one eight hundred super camp. <laughs> I want to call. I want to help. There's a there's a big difference between when I was in school and what's happening now on some levels, but other levels are the same. The commitment of teachers to do their best to teach their students no matter what it takes, and uh, the commitment on the side of the students to, I'm going to learn this because I need to or want to or need want to. You know, so some of the basic principles are the same. It's just how we're maneuvering in order to make things stay as normal and as um, out there for everybody as possible, you know, which is Mm. what humans are really good at. You know, there's Mm. a problem. Let's go fix it. You know, and, and let's, and in that, when there's a challenge or a problem, we excel. And that's what I see now is excelling and making things better for everybody. Mm. I agree. Yeah, it really causes Bobby, you to stretch yourself in your thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's an exciting time, and I think you're a part of the history, you know. We're, we're making history how we handle things, mm-hmm. and it's up to us on how we handle things. So we think about integrity, the very first key of excellence, and it's like, how are what are our actions now? Are we going to stay committed to certain things? Maybe we have to let go of others so that we can achieve the final key of excellence is living in balance. So I think what, you know, this whole virtual part of it, it's flexibility, it's commitment to continue the education, the amazing, it it goes beyond education, I think, with what you do, because it's it's the life skills included. And now you've got the entrepreneurial side, which I know you've done with, done that before, too, bringing this all together. I think this is very unique. And um, I just want for our new listeners I know you're on the show all the time with us, Bobby. I want our new listeners to know a little bit more if they have not heard about Supercamp. If you can give a little bit of, you know, background of Supercamp when it started. Um, I know you've really, you know, you've worked with, what, over 85,000 student successes, you know, and over the years and, and started, what, in 1982, and this is a global program. So you know that this is really going to just flourish and flourish and flourish as it as it goes through the years. And, um, just kind of give us a background of it, and now that you're virtual, what you see happening, you know, this year and maybe next year, and will this be something that you continue? Mm-hmm. Yeah, ten I questions always... in one. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. It's amazing to me thinking back to the very first program because it's almost forty years ago now. But we started mm-hmm. because we saw a need to teach students how to learn. It's assumed mm-hmm. they go to school, they know how to learn effectively, and we find most don't, as well as most adults out there. So when we do super camp and they learn so many um, ex, you know, accelerative learning skills and, and different learning skills, people will say, or the kids will say, why didn't anybody teach this to me? Because it makes mm-hmm. so much sense. That in the shift, because it is a transformational program where there's shift in how uh students feel about themselves and build up that confidence. And I always say that 
confidence with the courage to speak because it really mm. creates that core inside of, you know, the eight keys of excellence, we say create a core inside and that it becomes who they are. So when they are asked a question or um, they're asked for their opinion, they can really stand, you know, tall and know who they are and how they'll respond um, because they stop and think about it as well and really go deep into what's important to them. Um, mm. And that comes out in who they are. So it's been all these years. In fact, there's a group from the 1980s that get together on Zoom, uh, big Zoom calls together, and they share stories and how it's impacted their life. And I've been on them. They're every month, wow. for the six months, and it's how so cool. amazing to get. I should get you on then. <laughs> yeah, them. they are. Just hey, come amazing. on, yeah, because we went on. to the QLN program. We we learned how to mind map and. <laughs> You made us do little dances and stuff, but I learned more about communication <laughs> through that program than other program. I, you know, we've done, you know, learning about radio and podcasting and all that stuff. But when it comes down to it, it was like teaching is the same. It's all connected. It's communication. And I learned so much about communication that day. I want to do the Zoom thing. But this is interesting because when you think about that shift, you know, uh, what, six months ago, eight months ago, Bobby, you were on the show last year talking about you know, super camp, and it was like the end of, you know, when everyone was graduating through the super camp, how the parents were there with their kids, and you remember the parents being kids. So this is now, we've just changed again. (laughs) Within like how many months? How did that happen? (laughs) You know? That's awesome. That's awesome. It's really looking, you know, we're in a lot of countries, a lot of cultures, we're, um, yeah, because it's been all these years around the world, and Really, the what comes together is how they feel about themselves and their skills and how they take that forward in the world because that's really mm-hmm. what's important. And you know that along the way, the students were going back to school after their vacation and uh, teachers and principals were saying, what happened to you? And they told them about super camp. And that is the first time we got invited to a school was 1989, and they brought us in because one of the parents on the board of the school um, had sent their child to super camp and then we brought it in to train the teachers. And now wow. we're, we've trained hundreds of thousands of teachers. So uh, with all the programs wow. over the years that we've done. Yeah. Cause you've affected what over 2 million. We talk about the eight keys of excellence affecting 50 million. That's the goal. No matter how we're going to keep going towards it. But then, you know, you think of it like over 20 million youth have been affected by the eight keys and then super camp, you know, being that it's like, it's like the eight keys are the foundation and super camp is the action, you know, mm-hmm. to make it move forward. We've done it so so many years. We have our own programs that they go to, but we really get into the leverage and the big numbers when we're training so many uh, teachers and we train mm-hmm. teachers across big districts. And then those teachers have been teaching for 20 years. So, mm-hmm. you know, when they know the eight keys and continue to teach it to the, the, students you can reach mm. big numbers that way big outreach well let's talk I, about I, the, the, oh, go ahead nancy i was just going to say i think the crux of it is a safe environment whether it's mm. online mm. or in person on a campus that you have created a safe environment where teachers and students and parents feel safe about it. I think that's really the heart of the matter here. It is, because we talk uh, about our methods, and it's about culture and cognition. And without a positive, safe culture where kids mm. uh, want to participate and they have a sense of joy and curiosity and are not afraid to raise their hands and ask questions, mm-hmm. we have to get to that place before we teach want to teach them anything. Mm. Because oh. then when you bring in the content, you know, they're, they're open and they're engaged. Mm. So I want to go to Claude with that. Claude, with this new program, it's called Super Camp U, everyone. And it's a four-week experience. And there's all kinds of, you know, weekly programs. And it is built for ages 9 to 18. So preteens and teens, especially looking towards going to college or going and creating a, their own business. Um, so this all starts July 6th and runs through July 31st, 2020. But this is, you know, lifelong kind of you know, Bobby will never quit <laughs> on this. She's just going to keep going. I don't care what life throws. She'll just keep finding the way to keep this going. Uh, you know, and right. this is definitely cool. But, Claude, I wanted to ask you as a facilitator um, and also a trainer, how is it 
getting that connection with the students online versus being in person? How do you make them feel comfortable? Is it that people can say, hey, or, you know, because a lot of times when you do the Zoom thing, the, mer- the virtual thing, it's like we all have the mute button. We can mute people or they can mute themselves. Is there like a way for everyone to have like a hello, hi, I'm so-and-so and have that connectivity online so that they're, they're not muted unless you're supposed to be. I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, there's uh, a lot of elements from camp that that were transferred over to the virtual side. So the interaction part is still there. The uh, introduction of yourself, um, we do team questions to get to know each other. Um, and I always like to remind them that this is a safe space and um, this is relaxed. And so we also talk about, uh, we also agree on the agreements. And so we talk about, you know, these agreements of uh, making the most of every moment, doing what it takes, and also having respect. And so I open up uh, every session and I let everybody know that um, everybody here, this is a safe space, and there's no such thing as a stupid question or a stupid answer. Um, Feel free to share and raise your hand and uh, make statements that – that you feel comfortable with and know that, you know, we're going to validate you along the way and we're all learning and growing together. And I think being Mm -hmm. that transparent and authentic allows them to kind of open up and feel more relaxed because I'm quick to let them know that um, I'm learning and growing with you as well. And Mm -hmm. I don't know all everything, but I can find the answer. And if I can't find it, then I'll point you in the right direction. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. And, you know, I, I going on supercamp.com forward slash the letter U and reading through the program, the one part of it is talking about it's a focus on academic strategies, motivation, life skills, and leadership. Students gain the skills necessary to succeed in our ever-changing society. So, Claude, that's mm-hmm. part of it, right, creating that safe space for them mm-hmm. to, like, be able to – everyone's in a different situation, too, especially virtual. This is where I think Super Camp's going to end up connecting with more youth across the country and around the world through being virtual. I think it's more accessible in a lot of ways. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I think everyone's going to be a little different. So there is that change in society. And so when you start a session, do people talk about where they are based and, you know, their age or like, what, what is that level? Cause I'm also thinking about the parent side going, okay, how safe is it for my kids online? Cause there's going to be parents worried about, you know, how many blocks do I have to put on the Internet? So I just want to address that because I know parents are thinking, you know, I know it's education, but where does this go from here in regards to safety and, and also just and being able to still be connected? Mm-hmm. Um, it, well, everything is we, we make sure that we set up everything uh, to be safe. Um, so there is uh, a facilitator and also a support person that is on mm-hmm. uh, with every group. Um, and everything that we do, everything is done through a platform where we can keep ourselves safe and everyone else safe. Um, and everyone that surprise, – well, not surprisingly, but everyone that, that joins the group, um, they're all very supportive and they're all mm-hmm. – um, they're here for one thing, which is growth and which is learning. Yeah. So they always take the initiative to to keep each other safe as well as themselves. And um, but to, by the end of the uh, program, speaking of the quantum learning mentors, by the end of the program, uh, a lot of the students have connected with each other just from being on an hour for each day. They've connected with each other so much that they go on to set up their own group chats and their own kind of Zoom links to keep in, keep in contact. So that genuine That's connection awesome. uh, and feeling safe kind of, uh, pushes that that safety forward. And you have like a nice. Facebook group too, right? For everyone to keep connected and move forward with what what they're working on. That's and I'm really glad you said that about the, everyone's coming on board for a specific reason. I have to address the things because I'm thinking, you know, the parents. What everyone, you know, I have to go there. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> but the reality is, you're really right. Everyone's going to come for personal growth. That's the reason why they're there. And um, but being able to follow up and have the Facebook, the Zooms, everything like that, I think is super cool. Bobby, I wouldn't ask because there's some skills in here and and you talk about quantum uh, mentors, the mentors. So the quantum mentors versus the students. Can you enlighten us a little bit on that, Bobby? 
Well, there's a lot of uh, learning that goes on in, in all of our programs. You know, that's the basis of it. So when uh, we get to the Super Camp uh, U, that they're going to, it's actually four courses that they're going through. And this is uh, Super Camp Signature Core Curriculum, you know, that we've never offered it this way before. So it, like you say, people can connect from anywhere in the world and come join us. So there'll be uh, lots of kids from around the world that join these uh, different groups. Mm. We have uh, four courses that we're going forward with. One is Motivation and Leadership. And actually, uh, Claude is working, as, has been working on the development and of that program. We have the quantum reading, we have the quantum writing, and quantum strategies. So those are Super Camp's main curriculum areas, and to have them available, of course, is that we'll, we'll keep on going after, after July. July is live, and we have uh, one course after another for a full month. So that mm. is, you know, taking place versus our on-site uh, campuses, you know, on university campuses like we do. So that's one Super Camp U, but then we will be going forward with the individual courses. So even when hmm. kids get back in school, they could say, hey, one week I want to just really get my reading down and take it because, you know, all that they have to read and and um, it saves them time and they have better comprehension. And so they can hmm. take them um, in the future as well. Hmm, that, that, I like that. I, I think there's a lot to be said for personal choice of managing your own time. And I think that's going to be one of the things that students will embrace and learn a lot about. Like, oh, I could do this because nobody really is watching, but I could do this over here and I can do this at this time. And I think that's a life skill, learning how to manage your own time to your best advantage. And so I see this as an extra um, kind of added bonus to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That they're going to learn to manage their own time. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of another key. <laughs> you know, there the you ownership go. <laughs> key. Just taking responsibility for yourself and your learning. And boy, what a mm -hmm. time for students mm -hmm. to yeah. really learn and doubt about taking because nobody's there over their shoulder telling them what to do. You know, when they're learning online and they don't show up for a class, you know, the teacher often doesn't really know or why. Mm. And even if they are on the class, they might be not listening or doing mm -hmm. you know? So it gets down to, wow, somebody's not just telling me what to do all the time. I, If I'm going to get ahead, I have to take it on myself. Yeah. Mm. And I, you cool. know, to me, when I, when I was in school, I would have geeked out on this so much. I would have loved it because I was a big reader, but I needed help in understanding some things. And so you can speed read through your way through something because you get excited or it's just like, hey, you're really into this book or whatever it is, but you're maybe not taking in as much of the knowledge as you should. And so I'm really excited that you, you know, reading and writing are two big parts of this because I think that's a problem. And I wonder about it now, especially the way we are in the digital age. And, you know, even though this is mm -hmm. virtual, right? That reading is a big part because, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest, just even in business, I see people not being able to take more than two things out of an email. And you can construct yeah. it all the ways you want. But if you ask more than three questions, forget You're it. Done. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so, I'm, I mean, I'm, I don't know what it is, Bobby. Help me on that. But it's true. It's like, it, it's true. like can you choose A, B, or C? It's like, what? Now you went to C, you know? So I don't, there's, I see a problem actually in the world of people being able to handle that. And if you look at the world now, especially on the virtual world, we are really in the mode of fine print. And what do we all do? We just sign the fine print and move on, right? So yeah. how much of, how much are we really reading as a society as a whole? Mm -hmm. So the reading part, I think is very important that we're able to not just scan through, but actually ingest the information mm -hmm. well i think it's asking your questions at the beginning your self questions mm -hmm. because it is what do i want to get out of this why am i reading it is it mm -hmm. an assignment that i ha i don't care about at all and i'm just trying to get through it or is it something that oh uh, wow you just went why right am there I reading it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah because we can all stare at a page and go down to the bottom on screen or off and we get to the bottom and we're not consciously paying and attending to something. It's attending. 
because you have to attend, meaning you have to be uh, consciously thinking about and making connections and associations. <laughs> what do I already know? What does this connect to? How am I going to use it? It's really being an active reader and really getting into it. Your comprehension goes way up, and it's more exciting to read that way as well rather than just going through the steps. And it's remembering to remember. Sometimes I start to read something I need to read, and my mind starts, oh, my gosh, I, I forgot a call I needed to make. I better make that when I'm done reading. Well, in the meantime, I'm not remembering anything I'm reading at that moment. So it's really about focus, and Claude teaches us uh, a lot is that about our focus and focusing on one thing. And we call it, It's part of our what we call habits of an excellent learner. It's interesting, Bobby, when when you think about the reading part and then the writing part, because I think that's also an important skill of being able. If that goes back to that communication, right? So, writing now, what is it like for students? I mean, is everything? I'm sorry, but I'm out of the the world of being in school, and I don't have a child, so I don't know. But is it now? Is writing more on the words, the intent, the communication? Versus the the writing, and I mean, are they? Ha- I know you handwrite everything. You've got those big yellow legal pads in front of you. <laughs> I know you, <laughs> but I mean, so where are we on writing? Actually, I have no clue at all. I just, I what are? I mean, from what I see, even I talk to musicians all the time, and they're writing their songs on their phone. So, um, yeah, where are we on the writing part? Because that's another part of this, which is important. All right, do you want to take that one, Claude? Um, I think as far as far as writing today, the way that we've we've kind of transformed it, uh, we are getting students to take ownership over their writing and be proud of their writing. And so the way we do that, we use a creative discovery process. And so this allows them to think about, you know, what is the overall feeling that they want to portray from their writing? Uh, what do mm. they want the reader to feel? Um, how do they want them to feel? Um, how can they set up uh, the context and the content, you know, for that for when uh, someone reads their paper, they can tell that oh, I know who wrote this based upon mm. the words and how the the paragraphs were formulated. So it's all about getting students to take pride in their their writing and uh, to be creative in that. And so I think a lot of students um, they just write to kind of finish an assignment, and so they're just doing the bare minimum to make sure that they meet the the standards of what the teacher asked for. And so they just Mm. turn in, you know, standard writing. But this gives them an opportunity to to be as creative as possible and to create something that they're proud of. And while they're doing it, they're having fun, but also they're not feeling frustrated and not trying to figure out where do I start. Hmm. And and it's important, I think, when you look at it, like when I was in school, I don't want to date myself, man, but when I was in school, it's like we didn't have Wikipedia and stuff. We didn't have Google. We went to the library and did stuff, but your teacher knew what books were in the library, you know, and so, like, you got nailed if you started to copy stuff and you didn't make it your own, and Mm -hmm. it's very easy, and I know because we write in magazines, you know, it's like, oh, let's just copy this part here then you're not putting that personal twist on it. And I think it's, I watch it even, you know, I I know writers and I know when they start to do that little fudging thing that shouldn't happen, you've got to have that. It, there's a balance and there's an art to it to put who you are. Like Bobby, you were talking about how to be strong with your opinions, you know, but with, you know, uh, in being nice, you know, speak, speak with good purpose. Right. And then yeah. being strong with it. So I think this is a very um, this is very interesting. So Bobby, the reading and writing that was that's a normal part of Super Camp's curriculum. Yes, it is. I mean, we've been doing a you know all these decades, and we keep improving and coming way. We really, you know, talked and things change in the schools. There was like a writing process that a lot of schools had adopted, and we we were teaching it early on, but then. When it got adopted to schools, it was like we went deeper with it. And what we were finding, the main problem, was really getting started. You know, they feel overwhelmed with thoughts, or I don't know where to begin, or what do I include, or how do I put things together. So there's uh, levels that they go through where they just uh, 
um, diverge and then converge, you know, and it's like let your ideas all out there. Get them into clusters. You uh, star some, uh, put numbers and prior, prior, priority mm-hmm. on them. And then when you go to the next level in mind map, you start with, hey, what are the top start items? And then you put them in chunk. What goes together? And then all of a sudden you have this, frame of, oh, here's five ideas around this topic, and these things all go with this idea, and that goes with that. And then even free um, fast writing. When you fast write, it's like have your pen keep going, don't stop, because it takes away the judgment, you know? So you have your plan where you see all these ideas, and you start fast writing, and then it's like, boy, are you really warmed up, (laughs) you know? We talk about prime the mind, but this is really a warm-up for your paper, where you have a draft, and then then you get down to the heart of what do I really feel? What's important to me? What am I writing about? You, know, mm. you have ideas I love to that. support it. I love that it's because you know, we interview like, so many authors and musicians and their songwriting process or, or poetry or a book, a novel, or nonfiction, they all talk about that flow. And don't edit the flow. Like, you know what you're – you've got to know what you're doing. You have to have that direction. And they all talk about that. You know, all of the interviews we do with, you know, award-winning, best-selling, whatever, Grammy, whatever, (laughs) it all comes down to exactly what you said, Bobby, those skills. Mm -hmm. And having that focus and being right in the moment that this is it, you know. Um, But, Nancy, you had something you were going to say? I was just going to say it's kind of like looking at a blank canvas as a painter. You'd say, oh, Here's this big white thing. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to make it horizontal? Am I going to make it vertical? Where's my real thought? And so I think Mm. it all comes back to, are you thinking and doing something on purpose or are you just doing? You know, it's Mm. like that initial thought. Mm. And, And sometimes it's a lot harder to get to than people think. And a lot of times people just don't even think about thinking. Mm, right. you know, it, it, it's kind of like reaction instead of what's my purpose for this painting? What's my purpose for this article? What am I really intending to say and why? It's mm. that initial thought. You know, the habits of an excellent learner are so there because it is about attending, like conscious thinking about something. Because Mm -hmm. we're so easy, I oh, I have to do this, and just thinking about too many things. We say focus on one thing. And, you know, we talk about getting in state and a relaxed, focused state with Mm -hmm. what we call queue up. And then we prime their mind. What do I need? What do I already know about this subject? What do I want to include? And then that focusing on one thing and attending to it. It's like up Mm -hmm. and working memory. It's like you have to focus. We talk about that there's no really such thing as multitasking. There's, It could be mm-hmm. um, seconds, but it's, your mind is only on one thing at that particular you know, second. And so exactly. you want to uh, keep it on the one thing. And sometimes it's like sh- uh, a timer. You know, I want to get this project done, this paper, this idea, whatever I'm doing. It's I'm going to spend 30 minutes on this. So I can just fully put myself in for 30 minutes and then take a break. Otherwise, I start and, oh, an email that I have to answer just popped up. Mm-hmm. Oh, this. Oh, I'm hungry. I need a drink yeah. of water. Oh, this happened. Mm-hmm. But instead of like for 30 minutes, I'm not going to do anything but just focus on this one task and see where I am in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. I love this because these are life skills. You're helping the youth mm-hmm. from nine years, nine years old. You're helping the youth gain these perspectives to be successful, even going towards college or a business or whatever career they want to choose, you know, to be successful now, have those, you know, decision-making qualities and, you know, the focus that you're talking about too, and then be able to do this in life. I mean, I know the whole huge part of the business community wants to learn these. And if you can learn them at a younger age, they'll stick with you. Um, I wanted to go to you, Claude, um, in, in regards to, you know, there's the the reading, there's the writing, uh, motivation, all of that, you know, learning leadership, not only self-leadership, but leadership through SuperCamp and uh, what happens with Quantum Learning Network. Um, but I know that part of this whole program is to learn hacks for academic success. 
So this is something very important, right? So that's part of the whole program is they're learning things to help them really learn and study and actually get to that focus. We can sit and talk about it all night, but if you don't know the how-tos and those little tricks of the, of the, you know, of the learning part, it's really hard. So can, can you tell us a little bit about that part of the program? Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's, it's all about what you said. It's all about um, teaching them, you know, how to learn, how their brain works when it comes to learning mm. and how it works um, for them personally. And um, we, we like to blend that with uh, the eight keys of excellence. And what I find is that when, when they get into the life skills portion and they learn about the eight keys and they start to apply those intentionally, what happens is, is they start to build up confidence within themselves. And when they build up that confidence, then that confidence allows them to uh, take control of their learning um, and to be confident in their learning and to want to seek and do more and grow, not only in, in just their learning, but also in the goals that they have and things that they want to achieve. Mm. And and so with this, that's part of it. Are you, is it... Um... When when they're learning all of these, there's the eight keys. They're they're learning that part, but it's something that becomes a dialogue between the other students. Like you know, it's like oh, I had like oh, the, you know the, the this is it. It's like that light bulb moment that goes ding. Oh yeah, I got it now. But it, do you see that happen amongst the students, whether you're doing it virtually or in person, that it kind of spreads and becomes something that that is the dialogue between everybody. Mhm. Yeah. The uh, the the energy uh, still the energy still takes place even though it's virtual, um, and the the good part about it is that we have people we have students from all over the world, um, and they're connecting and so they come in with their ideas and their thoughts, and I always encourage everyone to share because when they share it sparks another idea in another student and then they share, and then here you are you have this collaboration going on and then the conversation or the debrief takes on a deeper meaning, and then there's deeper understanding and learning from that. Mm, very cool. Now, tell us a little bit about you getting involved with Supercamp. How many years have you been part of QLN and Supercamp? Uh, I started working in 2013. Um, and I, was, uh, I was a team leader. It was my first summer out at Brown University in Rhode Island. And um, I was a teacher at the time, and I was looking for, you know, something to fill up my summer, and I stumbled upon a super camp. I, I had done something like this in college, well, at least I thought I had, um, until I actually um, attended and I started working, and I realized that this was nothing like what I've experienced before. And mm. um, from my the first, very first, uh, the very first day of the very first camp that I ever worked, um, just seeing uh, the kids and the different things that they experience and me experiencing all of it for the first time, uh, that feeling that I had from that initial that initial feeling that I had, it sparked in me to say, you know what, everything that I had planned in my life, I just that I don't I don't want that anymore, and it, it, it oh, sparked wow. different in me to go out and seek something. You know what what do I really want and what do I want mm. to achieve. And that day I made a decision that every summer my summer was going to be clear and I was only going to do super camp for as long as I'm able to. And so I've stayed committed to that promise because I wanted other kids um, to feel the same feeling that I had when I was introduced to it. Mm, I think it's exciting to hear that because it's one of those like, uh uh-huh, that, that's the, this is it moment, right? Like, boom, mm-hmm. I got to do this. And then you you talk about the commitment, right? And I think that's it. And I think, for students, I love that it's virtual. I know we got we got to round up here, but I love that this is virtual, and that I think you're going to reach more people. Bobby, do you feel that? I know that you've reached you know millions, but do you feel that this can go further being virtual? Yes, it can, and also bringing students you know virtually or um, globally uh, together. Mm-hmm. So and people from all over can get together, and they they uh, yeah really connect that way. Oh, wow. That's, that part is very exciting, yeah. Wow. So everybody, you can go to supercamp.com uh, forward slash you, right? Or just go to supercamp, right? That What's the best part Either for way, everybody, you can Bobby? go to supercamp.com and there's a place to click to get to supercamp.com slash you. Okay. Yeah, it's it's pretty. It's, it's you Just go to supercamp.com. It's all there. 
And uh, so people need to kind of move on it now to get part of the July 6th programming, right? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, that's happening in a few weeks. So that'll yeah. be exciting yeah. for us to go through the month of July. It's the first time in 40 years, not oh, nearly 40 years, not physical. So this was our, yeah. this is our 39th summer. And, wow. and you never know when you're going to learn new things. <laughs> I know, it. right? I know, but I always knew that you were always saying there's a way to do this, you know, and now here it is. It's like, you know, yeah. but um, this is something that um, if people can look at also for the future, right? So this is something now you've put all this work into it that this will be, be stay until another big change happens. Let me just put it that way because, yeah, you know, you know, Nancy and I change all the time because, you know, we're in the digital yes. world and it's like, hello, <laughs> no, this is, you know, get over it. You're going to have to change um, whether everybody likes it or not. But do you, do you see this mm-hmm. being a, you know, something that's there for next year and, and everything that, and even year round because there's kind of this part of this whole COVID thing where, we see that the world could get into a mode of just being very virtual, you know, still going out and having experiences, but even like weekends not being typical weekends. Do you see that kind of changing at all? Or, you know, we, I, I think it'll take a few years for that to happen, but are you prepared if that happens for this to be full time for people? I know there, there are, I believe, uh, shifts that are going to continue for out of all this. School, I don't mm. believe, will ever look the same uh, mm. from where it was. So there's a, kind of a blended thing that I think will come out of this and new perspectives and, you know, how people are feeling and interacting with each other. So looking at just the magical moments that happen, the aha moments, the shifts that can happen and, and how it can happen you know, in blended environments, and right now it's hmm. in a virtual uh, It's safer, too. I talked about security for a reason, and at the same time, I think this has got a bigger safe, safety issue, too, in a lot of ways for um, people just to be able to access it all the time. And, you know, schools, we've had so many issues in schools, and, you know, obviously it's not replacing day-to-day school, but I think that this is something that there's something else if – if kids have missed something, it's there. Um, you know, there are areas in the country and around the world where kids don't get access that they need to the education because of security issues. And that's part of my thing with this. I think it's so accessible and it's so fantastic that kids can go there um, and have that. So really hats off to you guys for doing this. Uh, last thing, Bobby, the entrepreneurial thing is a big deal too, because listen, you can, there's like, I know kids that are in startups right now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they start when they're 13 years old and they've like built strong companies already. So you're ready for that too. Yes, we partnered with the Genius School Young Entrepreneurs Academy. And so, yes, they'll be going through and parents can actually get involved in part of it and working together. And students are going to be looking at what kind of goals, uh, their purpose and goals in life and some of them will uh, put a plan together for a digital company. They'll get teams together, and um, they're actually offering uh, $10,000 investment funding for uh, some of the students. So it's wow. a, it'll be a big Very deal. Cool. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I, I wanted to ask, I know that some, you know, everybody's got a different plan and going, you know, especially in the teens, you're looking at college, some are looking military, some are looking entrepreneurial. Um, but are you seeing that entrepreneurial calling, Claude, with you being a trainer and facilitator, are you seeing that happen with students looking at, I want to be the next, you know, dot-com dude or gal or, you know, whatever it could be. It could be anything. They want to fix things on climate change. I mean, I'm seeing the youth do a lot of amazing things, and I, mm-hmm. I give them big kudos. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you seeing that? Yeah, definitely. Um it's with the digital age, I mean, a lot of the students uh, that we work with, um, they're way more advanced than than I ever was at that age. And um, seeing a lot of the things that they're, they're interested in and th- that they do, you know, uh, interacting with YouTube, um, now going into Zoom, and they've been using their, their phones for years. So mm. they're looking to, to create apps and to create software um, that's going to help push us push us forward. This is cool, man. I love this. Thank you for joining us, Claude. 
Thank you, Bobby. Bobby, anything before anything else before we go? Um, just excited for the for the future, you know, and yeah. where this is going, and have the students mm-hmm. responding uh, so well uh, with this. Year. Probably ahead of us, so <laughs> we'll catch up with them. I, but oh, it no, is about. <laughs> I think it's about unity, and that's, again, what you've created here, too, on this virtual platform is this unity, the safe space, and everything. It's so cool. I want to go. You know, Nancy and I are like kids in a candy store or things like this, right? Yeah. 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 I know. We're like, can we sign up? I know. Do you yeah, think of join us. For adult? Can we? I, I want to sure. join you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you, Claude. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you have uh, good travels because I know you like to travel like Nancy and I do, <laughs> and ride a motorbike, right? So you have to stay focused yes. with that. <laughs> so stay safe on your motorbike, <laughs> and uh, you've got you got beautiful roads to drive in the back roads there in the Oceanside, going along Highway 101 and all that beautiful area. Thank you, Bobby, and hi to Joe, and everyone again. Supercamp.com is a place to go, and also. Um, Eight Keys, go to the number 8keys.org. Uh, check that out as well. And teachers and educators and schools, please go to qln.com for Quantum Learning Network and get involved because obviously, you know, Super Camp is revolutionary and good. So yeah. check them out. <laughs> I know. And so this song is oh, dedicated cool. to Bobby, Joe, everyone at Super Camp and QLN. This is called Unstoppable. And it's from our friend Doreen Taylor, who'll be on our show on June 21st. Doreen is a Billboard charting award-winning, uh, best-selling musician, singer-songwriter out of Philadelphia. And uh, this song is from her album Happy, Happily Ever After. And it's called Unstoppable because Supercamp is unstoppable, and they really help you know, the youth be unstoppable in a positive way with their life moving forward. So here it is, Unstoppable. You can keep up with Doreen at taylormusic.com. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Bye. Don't let people push you around.